we just thank you we just bless you Lord God you are a great and a mighty God and we are just so thankful that you love us we are thankful for the opportunity to minister uh, I'm very thankful for the opportunity to minister to your precious and valuable people that are all around the world that are listening on this live stream that are across waters that are listening to this live stream that are in the great towns and cities of the United States of America Holy Spirit as you always do please guide me help me minister to your people minister proper and sound doctrine that will lift them up that will bless them that will uh, be kingdom oriented and kingdom focused and now father as I go ahead and teach and minister your word I pray for opening open ears I pray for those that are ready to receive I pray that they pull on me in the name of Jesus by way of the Spirit and we're gonna have a great time Lord we just thank you in Jesus name amen all right well good evening everybody it is Wednesday evening it is a beautiful day here in Atlanta Georgia there's fried chicken smell going all around through the house praise God the children are outside playing it is a beautiful day we are all alive and God is still sitting on the throne I am Dr. Randy Bell Sr. of Zoe Life Ministries and welcome to our Kingdom Manor Bible Study via live streaming. And we have been talking about your spiritual armor and spiritual warfare. We're going over the armor first and then we're going to be talking about spiritual warfare. You don't want to miss it because we're going to cover some topics and some things that you probably have never ever gotten in your local church. So we are excited. I am ready to go. My lovely queen, Lady Bell. She just brought me my cup of coffee, praise the Lord, and it is piping hot. I got the word behind me. All I got to choose do is choose which Bible I want. We'll get the King James and the Amplified, and we are ready to get started. So let's open up our Bibles. For those that have been with us, you know where we're going. For those that are on the line for the first time on this live streaming, for, for the first time, we just want to thank you. May the Lord richly bless you. We really appreciate it. We don't take it lightly. And so I guarantee you're going to leave here with some meat, some spiritual meat that you can feast off of that will help you grow and develop and that will bless your life. All right? So let's turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. I'll be reading this out of the King James Version. And as I always do, I use the King James Version as well as the Amplified. It doesn't matter what version you have, we'll still arrive at the same place. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is present. He is on these lines. He is in this live streaming, and He's going to bless us. So, let's go to verse 10 of Ephesians chapter 6, please. And it says here, this is Paul speaking by way of the Holy Spirit. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints we're coming to you i um, teaching a message and it's called your armor and your your armor and spiritual warfare I want believers to be strong in the Lord I don't want believers to be weak a lot of times we look weak because we're doing things that are not in the spirit we're trying to handle spirit things with flesh the flesh yields no good thing. All right. Now, what is your flesh? Uh, you could say it's your body. You could say it's your feelings. But your flesh is also is more than that. Your flesh is a mindset that is contrary to the way God thinks. All right. Your flesh is also a mindset that is contrary 
to the Word of God. That's why we have what is called carnal Christians. Christians who are saved, saints who are saved, but they make their decisions and they do everything based on their five senses and based on what other people say instead of what the Bible says and what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell them. And so, uh, and so that's not trying to hurt anybody or hurt anybody's feelings, but that's really the truth. We want to battle the right way. See, before you got saved, most of you all were probably hard as nails, and you can take down anything or anybody. You could handle yourself in an alley at night uh, with more than one person. Well, guess what? You're, on a, you're in a different fight now. You're on a spiritual level, and you have to deal with, the spirit, with a spiritual enemy on a spiritual level with spiritual weapons okay now the Holy Spirit is leading me let's go over here to the book of Psalms let's go to Psalms chapter 144 please and I like to read this I like to read this because a lot of times we got soft you know a lot of times Christians get soft when they get saved people get soft when they get saved you're not supposed to be a wimp as a Christian you're supposed to be hard remember King David was hard as nails in this day and age a person like King David most people would not want as their neighbor because King David was a godly man but he was a hard man he understood how to fight in the natural and in the spiritual and please understand he made some big mistakes but every war that he fought he won and even when God was ta had took him to the woodshed with uh, killing Uriah and then sleeping with his wife or vice versa, sleeping with his wife and then killing him, he still had victory in his life. Now, he paid a heavy price for what he did, but guess what? The Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 13, that King David was, is a man or was a man after God's own heart. That's an awesome testimony to have. I want to have that testimony. I hope I can have that testimony. You know what? I believe I can have that testimony because I pursue God hard. And guess what? You do too. All right? So let's go here at Psalms chapter 144. And let's look at verse 1. Right here, verse 1, Psalm 144. King David wrote this psalm. This is a warrior's psalm. And he said, Bless be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war, and my fingers to fight. In the Amplified, it states, Blessed be the Lord, my rock and my keen and firm strength, who teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. God teaches his children how to fight. Because guess what? We're not on a cruise yet. We're on a warship. We're, we're battling. We're in a battle. Uh, the enemy wants your soul. He wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to take away your calling from your life. He wants you to feel defeated and be defeated. All right? That's what he wants. And God says, you know what? I have a way for you to overcome the enemy every time he comes knocking at your door or knocking on the doors of your mind or trying to, trying to rob you of what belongs to you. He says, I got armor that I want you to put on. And then I got weapons that I want you to fight with, spiritual weapons. Now, we're going to get into those spiritual weapons down the road in the weeks ahead. But right now, we got to start with the armor because you got to be fitted first before you go to a fight. You know, um, you have, uh, have you ever heard of the old saying, you never want to bring a knife to a gunfight? That's true. You don't want to go to a spiritual fight with natural weapons, okay? That's the same as going to a gunfight with a knife. Guess what? You're going to lose. You will lose, all right? And so God says he teaches us how to war and how to fight. And I pray that this teaching will turn you into a sanctified gangster for the Lord Jesus Christ, all right? A, now listen to me now. A, not, a, not, a, not a street gangster. I'm talking about a higher level of gangster activity. I'm talking about being a gangster in the kingdom of God of God where you are slaying demonic forces left and right everywhere you go to the point that when your name is heard in the portals of hell they run and they bow because they know you coming and they know they can't handle you because you are a sanctified gangster for the Lord and that's what it's all about it's all about fighting and winning and winning 
every time. Not winning and losing, winning every time. Amen? And if you're on the Lord's side, you will win every time. And guess what? It looked like Jesus lost. All right? Because Jesus was fighting a spiritual battle. Satan was bad fighting in the natural. He figured that if he could destroy Jesus' body, he would destroy Jesus. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 that had he had known about the plan of redemption, praise God, he would not have crucified the King of Glory. You see, Jesus always thinks ahead. And guess what? You and I have the mind of Christ, and therefore, when we start implementing the things of God and listening to the Holy Spirit, we will war just like when you play chess you'll be thinking and you will be playing one or two or even three moves ahead of your enemy your enemy will never be able to keep up with you amen let me get a taste of this delicious coffee oh yeah it's good praise the lord <laughs> okay now let's go back over here to ephesians chapter six now remember we started out with the armor in verse 14, God says, the Holy Spirit says, Stand therefore with your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. All right? And your feet shod with the preparation of peace. Let me say something here. I just see something in the Spirit here. If you notice in verse 14 and verses 14 and 15, the first three pieces of armor, truth, righteousness and peace it basically says having which is a verb which is a, 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 a verb it having belongs to the B category B or to have that means these are three pieces of armor that you and I are supposed to have on all the time in the spirit you should always have your truth belt on you should always have your breastplate of righteousness and you should always have your feet covered and protected with the gospel of peace these three must be on us at all times the last three that we get into you put on and you take off as you need but these first three you must have on at all times now the first one was this and we're doing a little recap is you have to have the belt of truth the belt of truth what does a belt do a belt brings order to your appearance it brings order to your clothing it allows you to be ready to fight because remember the Roman soldiers had to uh, they they didn't wear belts all the time they had on long gowns most of the time but when it was time to train or to time to go to battle they put on a belt and they would roll up their pants their, their shirts whatever was loose and they would tuck it in their belt so it would be tight so nothing would be loose for the enemy listen now for the enemy to grab a hold of and impede them or stop them all right that's why in the in the spirit when people sag in the spirit it tells me that there's lack of order in their life. Now, a lot of them will tell you it's fashion. It's not fashion. It's not fashion. It is a lack of order. Because if you're willing to allow your pants to be down, if you're willing to wear not wear a belt or to allow your pants to be down, you are opening the door in the spirit realm for disorder to come in your life. All right, you're opening yourself. When someone exposes themselves, they're opening themselves up for attack. Okay, you're opening yourself up for attack. The enemy can pull you down because you don't have order. Remember the example I gave uh, at our house uh, back in North Carolina. I was driving in the neighborhood, and at the edge of the neighborhood near uh, we we lived near this McDonald's in the neighborhood. It was on the edge of our uh, subdivision. And this idiot kid, he's probably 17 or 18, he would not, he was running from the police, but his pants were sagging. And he would stop every, this clown, it was so ridiculous, he would stop every four or five steps while he was running, and he would pull up his pants. He was being chased by a fat, out of shape cop that should not have ever caught him. But because this idiot would not pull up his pants and tighten his belt and get order about himself, he kept stopping and this fat, out of shape cop actually uh, tackled him and arrested him. All right? Real, you know, just silly. So, so a belt brings order 
to your life. It brings neatness. Another example I gave was my wife and I were in the military and we used to have to wear a web belt. I forgot what we call it, but we would call it a web belt. And on that web belt, everything that we needed to go practice and to prepare for battle, we could put on that belt. In a uh, in a matter, we were able to put on our our first aid kits, our 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 canteens, our uh, ammunition pouches. We were able to put on all these things. Our entrenching tool to dig a foxhole. We were we were able to put on all these things, so that we could be prepared in training and to be prepared prepared to uh, to go to war if we needed to. So a belt brings order. The belt of truth. Truth brings order to your life. It causes things that are sloppy. Truth causes things that are sloppy to straighten up. And unfortunately, like I said before, we have a lot of Christians that live sloppy, shabby lives. They live so sloppy and so shabby. They 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 make they 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 you know non-Christians make them look bad. You know, sinners. That's what a non-Christian is, a sinner. Okay, a straight up sinner. And so a non-Christian, you have non-Christians that live more that lead that leave lives that are more lead lives that are more moral than men, than many Christians. And it's a shame. And it's a shame being outdone by somebody that's in the world that should never be. The truth belt brings order to your clothes. Truth brings order to your life. It causes things to shape up or ship out. It causes people to either shape up or ship out. It causes you to shape up or to just say, you know what, I don't want to follow God. I prefer to be in the world. That's what truth does. Now, we're on the breastplate of righteousness. Now, remember, I said that righteousness in a nutshell is the application of God's truth. Now, what is righteousness? What are we talking about with righteousness? Well, let's look here. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, please. Um, and let's talk about righteousness. Righteousness, the definition of righteousness in its simplest terms is being justified or righteousness can be defined as being in right standing with God. All right? You're in right standing. Now, the only way you can be in right standing, first of all, you have to know Jesus as your personal Savior. All right, because look, your own personal righteousness is no good. Isaiah chapter 64, I believe, in verse 6 says that our own personal righteousness is just like filthy rags in his eyesight. That's a powerful statement. Don't get mad at me. I didn't say it. God said it. He said that our own personal righteousness is filthy rags. If you are a saved person and you are trying to live for God in your own righteousness, he is saying that your righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. If you don't know Jesus as Savior and Lord of your life, everything you do is of filthy rags to God, period. Because morality is not what gets you in heaven. There are a lot of good people and a lot of moral people and a lot of ethical people in hell, all right? Lots of them. A lot of intelligent people, educated people in hell. A lot of people with PhDs, with THDs in hell. You want to know why? Because hell, I mean, because people go to hell not because of sin. The sin problem has been taken care of uh, right around 2,000 years ago when Jesus put all of our sins on him and died with them and was crucified with them. The sin issue is not an issue anymore, all right? The one who does not accept Jesus as Savior and Lord go, is the one that goes to hell. Hell is full of people that have not accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord. It's not because of sin. It's not because of sin. It is not a because of sin. And I'm going to show you that if you allow righteousness to be in your heart, and if you accept it by faith through Christ Jesus, you can live a life that is sinless. Now, you might be like, whoa, 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 whoa. We're not perfect. No, it's not based on our perfection. It's based on Christ's perfection. All right? Now, what, how do I mean by this? What do I mean by this? Well, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, all right? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. All right, let's start at verse 17. 
we know this. It says here, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are passed away. Now, wait a minute. What are the old things? Okay, the old things consist of the previous spiritual and moral condition of a person. All right? The, the previous moral and spiritual condition of of a person and let me just say this real quick because it just it just dropped in my spirit righteousness and holiness are different now a lot of people they say they're the same no they're not and I'll tell you in just a second here had to get a little taste of the coffee again praise the Lord righteousness has to do with being in right standing with God it is your position in Christ okay it is your position in Christ that means even though you may sin, your position in Christ is still that as, as one who is righteous. All right? Now, that's a little deep. We'll get into that in a moment. Holiness has everything to do with your behavior, your conduct, your personal conduct, what you will or will not do. That's holiness. The problem with the church is that the church preaches on holiness to a standpoint uh, and, and a, as, a, as a means of correcting a person's life and getting and to get them to heaven. Holiness does not do that. All right? Holiness does not do that because holiness is your behavior. The problem with that is if you give people a bunch of rules and preach sin and tell them what they should not do all the time, guess what's going to happen? They're going to do it. All right? They're going to do it. That's why I don't preach sin consciousness I preach righteousness consciousness you want to know why because when you know that you are right with God it will automatically correct your conduct all right it'll automatically correct your conduct I mean uh, you know you could be laid up with someone and be married and then all of a sudden all of a sudden the righteousness of God comes upon you and you realize well wait a minute I don't have to live like this now you messed up big but you but you can you can fix that you see or or you or or you just rob somebody and you realize well, wait a minute I'm the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus I don't have to do this this is wrong this is wrong now the inside is working on is, is working and then it'll correct the things that are on the outside and I'll actually talk about that a little bit later in this teaching so anyway holiness and righteousness are totally different see in the Old Testament people had to walk holy God gave them a bunch of rules to show them now why was what was the purpose of the law the purpose of the law was not to curb sin because God knew that the people were going to sin the purpose of the law was to show them that they could not follow the law or they could not measure up to God's standard of righteousness which is perfection in the natural in their natural bodies so the law was there for, to show them that they could not do it. They didn't have the ability to follow the some 623 laws that are written in the Pentateuch, which consists of the first five books of the Bible. He showed them that they couldn't fulfill it and that if they, if they messed up in one part of the law, they broke the entire law. And because they broke the entire law, that they needed a savior to help them uh, to bridge the gap so that they and God could be together again and so that you and God can be together again and so that I and God can be together again what is that bridge better yet who is that bridge that bridge is Jesus Christ he came down he lived a perfect life he did not sin not one time he fulfilled all 600 some odd points of the law from the book of Genesis to the book of De Deuteronomy he did it to the very T and when he fulfilled all the law it was time for him to go to the cross and then he could be made as sin he could take on our sins because he was the perfect sacrifice he did not sin and listen he lived life on this earth as a man he did not live on this uh, he was a he's a hundred percent God and a hundred percent man at the same time and he lived out his life on this earth as a man if he had lived this life on this earth as God then it would be unfair for him to tell us to live a righteous life 
it would be unfair because he had an upper hand but he did not use his upper hand which was his deity he did everything as a man and so he is our high priest and he is our example for us to follow now okay so therefore if any man this is second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become new new you become a new moral and spiritual person all right everything that you've done whoop wiped away under the blood of jesus yeah but i murdered somebody whoop uh, wiped away under the blood yeah but i slept with other people's spouses well, guess what as nasty as that is under the blood praise the lord it's under the blood i robbed people under the blood i went to prison for theft under the blood i hit my spouse i cuss her out or i cuss him out because now ladies are trying to fight me in now whoop all under the blood i abused my children under the blood i used to be a liar under the blood everything under the blood you are a new creature pray, praise god you're new you're new now your physical body is the same remember like i said if you had onions bunions and corns on your feet you still got them that's a personal hygiene physical issue you got to take care of but praise god your spiritual condition is taken care of amen you are a new creature in christ all things are passed away behold all things are new so when you get around your crazy relatives and they start talking about how you used to be you have to stand up like like paul did and say look my name is paul and i have wronged nobody i don't know what you're talking about all right not i do not know what you're talking about i don't know what you're talking about because i am randy and i'm a new creature because your family and your friends they always gonna look at you based on your past god looks at you based on your future praise the lord God looks at your potential and what you can do. Real friends look at what you can do. Look at what your potential is and what you can do and put you in the best position so that you can fulfill your potential. What is your potential? Potential is just your untapped power. Okay? What you have not done yet in life. That is your potential. Amen? So, so when you become new, you may have to stay away from some people. All right? You may have to you may have to diss some people for a while because people are going to only see you. And it doesn't matter how great you are in the things of God. It doesn't matter how for how much you run for the Lord. People that know you from your past, they're still going to look at you as they as you were from your past. Guess what? There's nothing you can do about it. Live for God. That's all that matters, because guess what? You are going to be accountable and you have to account for everything that you do. No one else can do it for you. Praise God. All right. Verse 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, okay? And have given us, and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That means that we bring others in harmony with God or in right standing with God, okay? Getting people saved. That's, that's reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation. Look, everybody has, if you're saved, Everybody has the ministry of reconciliation, the ministry of getting people in harmony and right standing with God through Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay, verse 19. To wit, um, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. See, God is a good Jesus is a, uh, God God is a good God. Jesus did not put what belonged to us on us. All right? Because guess what? Cuz guess what? If you're around my age, you and I, you know, we should have been dead some 20 20 25 30 years ago. All right? Because of the sins that we've committed. But Jesus in his goodness and because he wanted to reconcile people back to God through him and through his righteousness, he does not put on, uh, he does not put our sins back on us. Okay? He does not do it. All right? So that's a great thing. Verse 20 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, 
as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Okay? So, now, this is the whole ball of wax here. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. He made Jesus to be sin for you and for me. And he knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That we might be approved and acceptable and in right relationship with God. See, when you are in right standing with God, you are approved by God. You are approved by God. You see? That's a beautiful thing. See, I may not be approved by you. I may not be approved by my relatives. I might not be approved by my friends. Well, really, I don't have friends that don't approve me. So if they did, not, they're not my friends anymore. But I'm not interested in people approving me. I'm only interested in God approving me because God is the one who gives me everlasting life. And you have to have that same attitude as well. Go hard for God. Run for God. People might think you're crazy. People might think you're loony. People may not understand. But guess what? When you walk in the righteousness of God, you will have a life that is full of goodness and you will have God's approval. Amen. Now, let me give you some points. Uh, let me give you some points. Now, remember, this is the breastplate of righteousness. So the right, the breastplate, it sits on top of the belt, the belt of truth. That's why righteousness is truth in action. Okay? Getting the truth of God's word and then doing it by faith. That is righteousness. Just doing God's word. Doing God's word. Doing it by faith in Christ Jesus. All right? Now, I want to give you some simple points. And I want to give you just four points. I'm going to try to go ahead and finish this tonight. Uh, looks like I got about mm, roughly 28 minutes. So, I think I can do it. Right. Four simple points. I'm going to give you four R's. The first R is that I want you to recognize. All right. I want you to recognize, which also means to pinpoint, to identify and to know that the enemy, even though you're right with God, will still attack you. All right. Because it says here in Ephesians chapter six. And let me flip back over there. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11, it says, put on the whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able, that you may be able successfully to stand up against, listen to this, all the strategies and deceits of the devil, all that you may be able to stand up against or withstand all of Satan's strategies and all of his deceits. All right? Because he wants to remind you of what you did yesterday. He wants to remind you of what you did last night. He wants to remind you of what you did on the job today. He wants to remind you of that thought that you had. He wants to remind you of these things. Because remember, he preys on people. But the Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 9, to be sober, to be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, the key word in this verse is the word, what do you think it is? It's the word like. All right? Now, you might think adversary, devour, no, being sober. No, the key word is like. Why do I say that? Like in the English language is what? It's a simile. It's a simile. It's comparing one thing to another. All right? So the Bible says that the devil walks about like a roaring lion. That means he's being compared to a roaring lion, but he is like a roaring lion. He is not a roaring lion. Now, the only time he becomes a roaring lion in your life is when you allow him to become one if you're saved. All right? 
if you're saved and you got hell on earth, that means you got the devil in your home cutting up and you need to put him out. But it requires you to change some things and it'll start with yourself. Okay? Never ever look at your spouse. Always look at yourself first. All right? When you start dealing with you, God will deal with your spouse and will deal with your children. All right? You see, or, or, or your relatives or whatever. You always start with you. So he says, look, Satan is an adversary, but he walks as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Who is he seeking? He is seeking those that open the door to allow him in. Because, look, the only authority Satan has in your life, in the life of a believer, is what you give him. Okay? When you sin... You give the authority for Satan to come in your life. All right? And cut up. All right? When you don't walk in love, you give Satan the opportunity to come in your life and to cut up. All right? When you walk in unforgiveness, you give Satan the license to walk in your... You open the door and you allow Satan to come in and wreak havoc. And when Satan comes in, comes in the door, Satan don't come in the door by himself. Okay? Satan brings sickness, he brings death, he brings disease, he brings poverty, he brings schizophrenia, he brings strife, he brings everything that is outside and contrary to the goodness of God. That's what he brings. Alright? That's what he brings. Okay? A gangster, if you open the door to a gangster, he doesn't just come in on his own. He's bringing his guns. He's bringing his gang. He's bringing his filth. He's bringing his evil thoughts and plans and his schemes. He's bringing all that into your house. But in this instance, in the spirit realm, when we willfully do these things and don't fix them, we open the door for him to come in. That's why so many believers have hell on earth. Okay? Believers should not have hell on earth. All right. Even if bad things happen to you. OK. Even if bad things happen to you, you can experience heaven on earth. Still lose your job. You can still experience heaven on earth. You've been sick. You can still experience heaven on earth because God will heal you. God will still cause resources to come into your home. I know what I'm talking about. I'm a living witness of these things. Amen. So. He contends with the saints. Remember, Jesus said in Luke chapter 22, verse 31, before he went to the cross, he told Peter, he said, look, Simon, Satan has indeed asked you that he, that he can, if he can sift him like wheat. Jesus said, but I pray for you that your faith fails you not. You see? And righteousness operates by faith. You have to have faith in Christ Jesus because when you have faith, God counts it as righteousness. Remember Abraham way back, I believe it's in Genesis chapter 15. The Bible says, and Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. That same thing applies to us today. Amen. He instigates sin. Remember, Satan is a murderer and a liar. And so you have to recognize this and keep your armor on so that when he instigates and throws darts, you understand and you know that, hey, I'm the righteousness of God. Yeah, I made a mistake, but guess what? God forgives me. I'm the righteousness of God. I, I, I won't do that no more. You know, or, hey, I made a bad decision. You know what? I'm the righteousness of God, and my decisions here on out will be the right decisions based on what the Holy Spirit tells me. Do you see what I'm saying? So you and I have to recognize that he instigates sin. He still tries to bring sin in our life. That's why you have to have on armor have 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 you have to consistently you have to constantly have on the breastplate of righteousness because until jesus returns for us he will continue to instigate sin remember the bible says that he is the accuser of the brethren revelation chapter 12 verse 11 if i'm not mistaken all right also second corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 says lest satan should take advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his schemes or you could translate that devices. Okay? So we have to know what they are because we have to always be on guard. Just because your armor is on, that does not mean your enemy is not going to attack you. Okay? It does not mean that. When if you're a soldier 
If you're a soldier and you are on guard duty, you have your weapon, you have your armor on, you have your um your helmet on, you have your weapon at your side in your hand on the ready, okay, ready to pop a cap in somebody if they breach what you're guarding. And but guess what? That does not mean the enemy is not gonna come. It does not mean it. Because if your breastplate is not on right, or you choose not to put it on, you're open for satanic attack. He can go and he can aim right at your heart. You know how it is when you play sports. Uh, you know, when I used to play sports, I was, you know, I used to be super competitive. And so my, I did not want to just beat you by one point because I didn't want to play you again. I want to take your heart out, okay? I want to beat you by 100 points, all right? I want to stump a mud hole in you, okay? See, there's not, there's not enough people with killer instincts in the Holy Ghost, you got to have a killer instinct, not to just beat the devil, but to beat the snot out of him. So that when he comes after you, he got to think twice, okay? You, you can't be this soft joker, Mr. Devil, please leave me alone. Don't fight with me today. I'm tired. No, you got to be like, Devil, I am ready for your behind. Come on in here if you want to. You ain't getting out. You have to think like that. You have to think like that in the spirit, and you have to act like that in the spirit, okay? Because Satan does not take breaks. He does not take Christmas Day off like we do, okay? He does not take vacations. Unfortunately, many of us take vacations, and, we, and while we're taking vacations to rest, we take vacations from God too, okay? No, you're not supposed to do that. We shouldn't do that. He is always ready. He is looking to attack you. And let me tell you when Satan wants to attack you. He usually wants to attack you after a victory because that's when you're most vulnerable. Or he wants to attack you when you're hungry, alone, uh, I'm sorry, hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. I call it the HALT principle. Hungry, H, alone, A, lonely, L, tired, T. That's when Satan will attack you. All right? He will not attack you when you're strong. Okay? That's why it's always a good time to fast and pray after a victory. It's always good to be in scriptures when you're hungry, alone, or I'm sorry, angry, lonely, or tired. It is always a good idea to be up on your game. All right? Because Satan does not take vacations. He does not stop the battle because there's six inches of snow outside. He don't stop. He doesn't stop because it's Christmas Day. He doesn't stop because it's New Year's. He doesn't take a break because it's your birthday. He is not interested in any of that stuff. He's only interested in killing you and making you unfit for the kingdom of God. All right? But praise God, you are a sanctified gangster in the kingdom of God. So you are always ready. All right. The second point I want to give you. What time is it? All right. We're good. Praise the Lord. Thank you, son. The second R is rest. Rest. What is rest? Rest means that we are free from toil or strain. Okay. It means that we're when, when you rest, you relax. Right. When you rest, you, re, you relax. Resting means that you are free from you have been freed from toil. All right? God is saying that you and I are to rest in Christ's righteousness. Okay? Because you and I must have the absolute assurance, assurance that we are totally welcome into God's presence because of Christ's righteousness. Let me tell you something. I don't care what you've done. Guess what? Jesus doesn't care what you've done. The Holy Spirit wants to direct your life. And you have to believe that you are saved and you have to believe that you are the righteousness of God. All right. It doesn't matter what you've done. What you've done make make the, the, the hair on the or the I ain't got no hair, but the hair on the back of other people's head to stand up. It might. All right. That's fine. Jesus doesn't care about that. So if Jesus doesn't care about that and is forgiven you, you need to let it go, too. OK, you need to let it go. All right. You need to let it go. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 6 says that the Lord, uh, the, Lord uh, the, the Lord is the Lord our righteousness, or he is Jehovah to Sikhanu, all right? The Lord our righteousness, Jeremiah 23 verse 6, 
all right so um nothing that you and i have ever done that's good would be acceptable in christ's sight with our own hands trying to be right all right a lot of people do good deeds they're not saved being good still locks you out of the kingdom of god it's all about accepting christ as savior and lord and then his righteousness comes into your life now your good works through christ is now uh, uh, are now acceptable to him all right look have we sinned of good against god yes are we worthy of hell yes but christ steps forth in accordance to the scriptures that we just read the scripture that we just read in second corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of god in christ jesus the good news is that when you receive this righteousness which is a free gift your sins are wiped away in christ in christ all is forgotten by god in christ our sins are separated from us as far as the east is from the west the east and the west never meet now north and south do meet okay if you go far enough north you will start traveling south okay if you travel uh, south far enough you will start turning north going north east and west however never ever ever never meet and God says through Christ you are the righteousness of God and on top of that your sins are separated from you as far as the east is from the west in Christ my record is clean in Christ my soul is washed clean in Christ my conscience which was filled with guilt and shame is no longer filled with guilt and shame I have rest I have peace I can sleep at night and I don't have to look over my shoulder because my conscience is clean because I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus now I have a clear mind and I'm happy I have a clear mind I can hear from God I can I, I can be creative because my mind is clean I can smile I can look at people I don't have to look behind my shoulder because I am now the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus I'm set free praise God you're the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus you are righteous okay if you are in Christ you are righteous you are righteous okay so you and I have to rest from our works Hebrews chapter 2 is a great chapter to read 2 3 and 4 about rest the children of Israel did not want to enter into God's rest what is God's rest God's rest is his spiritual blessings prosperity goodness healing joy happiness peace victory great relationships you know you know uh, 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 potential fulfilled dreams coming true things of that nature goals being met visions being fulfilled all of that is the rest of God but they would not do it because they would not mix what they heard the Word of God with faith you must have faith with faith you can be made right you are made right not can be you are amen so you must you must uh, uh, rest now the third point and I think I'm making pretty good time here. Is resist. You must resist. Okay? When righteous people have to have to resist. What do I mean resist? To resist means to stand firm. It means to combat. It means to withstand. I like um in fact, let's go um let's go over to Galatians chapter 5. Verse 1, one of my favorite verses. Galatians chapter 5 says, To stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. God is saying, look, I have freed you. I have made you right. Don't go back to trying to do things in your own strength. Stop trying to do things in your own strength. Allow God to move in your life. Allow God to help you and assist you. When the enemy 
starts coming in like a flood, you stand fast. Now look, notice something about this armor. There's nothing that covers your back. Nothing. The armor doesn't cover your cover your back. Now, it's interesting. Why wouldn't why would God not create armor uh to cover our back? Because God is our rear guard. God has your back. And guess what? God does not expect you to retreat or turn back. <laughs> All right? Because God is not a retreating God. God is an ever moving, he's an ever forward, he's an ever being God. Okay? So God does not go back. All right? He does not go back because God is absolutely undefeated when it comes to Satan and his his entourage. All enemies of God have been defeated by God. God is perfect. God is undefeated. The Holy Ghost knows nothing but victory. He ain't never lost a fight and he never will ever lose a fight. And if you are in him, you will never lose a fight either. Praise the Lord. So he's saying, look, stand fast. That means, now stand fast. Look, he says stand fast. He's not asking. He's giving a command. He's saying stand fast. Stand fast is a military term. Now I don't know about the Navy, the Air Force, or the Marines, but I know what stand fast means in the Army. Stand fast in the Army means to hold your position. Stand fast means do not retreat. Stand fast move means hold your place. Stand fast means do not move. Stand fast means resist. Praise God. And God is telling you and I to stand fast. To hold your positions until I give you instructions but by way of my spirit for you to move forward in victory not backward anytime we move backwards we didn't hear God alright anytime we move back uh, we move backwards that means we missed God we didn't hear God properly or we ignored him okay so he's saying look stand fast alright resist the enemy's accusations alright resist them resist them he is the accuser of the brethren. In fact, I think that's actually Revelation 12, 10, not 12, 11. But he is, he is the accuser of the brethren, and you and I are to resist him. We are not to run from the enemy. Don't ever, ever run from the devil, okay? Because you are in Christ. He is a defeated foe already. And whatever he's doing in your life, if he's doing anything in your life, is because you have granted him per, uh, permission. Okay? Because he's not a roaring lion. Because you start standing up and asserting yourself in the spirit. He runs like a little kitty cat. Okay? He runs like boo-boo kitty. Praise the Lord. Amen? All right. So, point number four, the last R, is I want you to remember. I want you to remember that who you are, I want you to remember who you are in Christ. Your position in Christ is that you are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. I want you to remember that. To remember means to recall, to recollect. I want you to remind yourself, all right? I want you, if, if you forget, I want you to revive yourself to the truth, not fact, truth. Fact is true, but fact is incomplete, okay? Truth is complete because truth comes from God. I want you to revive yourself to the truth that Christ died for you. You are filled with the Spirit. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And that you are made right through Christ Jesus. All right? You are made right. Now, notice again, the breastplate covers all your important organs. What's the most important organ you think you have in this area that a breastplate will cover? My son answered the question. He's so smart. <laughs> he is, for real. He, uh, is your heart. Your heart. All right? Because if that can be pierced, the rest of you, uh, you know, the rest of you is dead. You know, you're done. You're done. Because why? Because the heart pumps the blood throughout the body. If your blood stops moving, you're dead. 
okay? Blood circulates from your body. It goes into the heart dirty, it comes out clean, and goes through the rest of your body, all right? So that's why the book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says to keep your heart with all diligence for out of it releases or springs forth the issues of life. You want to see why people have the murderous spirit down here in Atlanta? It's because of what's in their heart. Murder is in their heart. Why is there so much divorce amongst people? And it's so sad. Even Christians, Christians are outdoing non-Christians. Why is that? Because of the attitude of the heart. Okay? Why are people living in sin and living in moral decay? It's because the heart. The heart must be protected. Because the life brings, uh, life springs forth from the heart. Let's get to the heart of the matter. Have you ever heard of that, that, that expression? That statement? Let's get to the heart. Because at the heart is what's real. Is the real deal. It's the root. It's the root. It's the root. Putting someone in jail, and they should be in jail because of their conduct, because of their behavior, that's not necessarily going to change the person's heart. If they get released from prison, they're still going to be a murderer. They'll still go around murdering people. But once you can get to the heart of the matter, that's when you can change things. That's why.